With the release of season 2 of The Witcher series, we are reunited with many familiar faces. As Wolf returns to Kyre Morhen with Ciri, we are reintroduced to Vesemir, who is played by Kim Bodnia. Vesemir, throughout The Witcher story, has always been a supporting character, a father, mentor figure to Geralt. However, his past is no small tale. Prior to Geralt becoming a fully-fledged Witcher, Vesemir was crucial to ensuring their survival. Before the release of Season 2, Netflix made an animated film called The Nightmare of the Wolf. In which, we get a glimpse of Vesemir's past. It tells the crucial tale of everything that happened before Geralt's arc. So in this video, we are going to explain everything that happened leading up to the attack at Kyre Morhen. Welcome to an episode of Curiosity Cure. Like and subscribe for more quality content. In the animated film, Vesemir is first seen saving a noble child from a lesion, in the Kedwin Woods. After a lengthy duel, Vesemir finally slays the beast by setting it ablaze. On its dying breath, the Leshen mutters an unknown phrase in Elion, an archaic elvish dialect that few spoke today. Despite the Leshen being slain, Vesemir's medallion continues to shake and he senses another presence in the woods. Meanwhile, in the royal courts of Kedwin, the main antagonist, Tetra Gilcrest, a sorceress that hailed from the lineage of the first human mages who held purest beliefs, attempts to persuade the king to rid the Witcher's presence in Kyr Morhen. However, her efforts were fruitless due to the persuasion of Lady Tserbst, an influential advisor who held a moderate view of the Witcher's existence. Later on, Vesemir was visited by the elf Philivandril, who in the present, along with Francesca, leads what remains of the elves. Philivandril confirmed what the Leshen said was indeed Elyon, which Philivandril translated into Beware the Den of My Dead. This disturbing occurrence leads them both to believe that the Leshen was bewitched by an elf. As few spoke the ancient dialect, Philivandril suspected that it was Kitsu, a young elven mage that disappeared four summers ago and was followed by numerous other disappearances. Philivandril requested Vesemir's assistance, but Vesemir profusely declined, stating that he is a monster hunter, not an elf wrangler. However, Philivandril persisted, asking Vesemir to do it as a favor. To which Vesemir replied, Favors and friends don't pay bills, quite the opposite. The disappointed Philivandril left in distaste, claiming what witchers could accomplish if they weren't just after coins and thrill. Vesemir looked down at a piece of pie and started reminiscing about his past life, a time before he was a witcher, a time when he was only a lowly servant along with his best friend and crush Eliana. His first encounter with a witcher was with someone named Daglin, who Vesemir briefly mentioned to Ciri in the show. Daglin noticed Vesemir when he pulled a clever con on a merchant to use the master's money to buy honey cake while still obtaining some blue gum for the ill mistress that he served. Suspecting that a potential victim was possessed by Amar. A dangerous creature that can possess humans and create illusions. Daglin approaches them in an alley, demanding that they take him to their masters. After being brought into the chamber of the ill mistress, Daglin with the assistance of Vesemir, successfully exorcised and killed the Mar. After which, Daglin was paid a large sack of gold coins for the job. This intensely allured Vesemir, therefore, Daglin threw two coins at Vesemir for his help. Vesemir, now determined, thrived for a better life, and set out on a journey to Kyre Morhen, leaving behind Ileana and his father. At Kyre Morhen, Vesemir along with other boys, began their harsh training. They fought one another with swords in harsh winter conditions while being given little in the way of food, clothing, or sleep. One night in the rest quarters, as many of the boys complained about the gruesome conditions, Vesemir realizes that most of them were either sold by their family or drafted by the law of surprise, an ancient law that dictates a man who saved by another is expected to offer to his savior something that is yet to be known or determined by both parties. While one boy named Thomas sat crying, Vesemir went over to comfort him, promising him that everything will be fine, which is Thomas. After waking up, Vesemir realized that they were all mysteriously transported to a swamp that dwelled dangerous monsters, wraiths, and other creatures. One by one, the boys were devoured by the monsters. Realizing that this was a test, as the witcher's first instinct was to survive, Vesemir managed to evade them long enough and run to safety by jumping off a cliff. Once Vesemir woke up again, he was in a hospital along with the other survivors. He realized that Thomas, whom he comforted the previous night, was killed by the beasts. Traumatized by the experience, he stumbled across a lab full of monster experiments and encountered Rydric, the witcher's mage. Rydric, who believed that the witcher deserves to know his place in history, explains to him that the mages first created the hybrid monsters to fight against the elven race and then created the witchers to slay the monsters. But to prevent future abuse, Rydric and his mages now guard the knowledge of such mutagenic alchemy. 
Before Rydrick could explain any further however, Daglin barges in, not wanting Vesemir to hear more. Vesemir, enraged, confronts Daglin about all the boys that died in the forest. Which Daglin coldly replied it's a numbers game. Before the final transformation to a Witcher, Vesemir received a letter from Ilyanda, revealing that his father died after Cadewen raided the village. She urges him not to return home and tells him that a Cadewen noble family has claimed her as theirs and she is well fed and at peace. She hopes that Vesemir finds his peace too, finally free of past burdens, hurt, and free of her. With the last of his past at ease, Vesemir began the final process of becoming a Witcher. Often referred to as the Trial of the Grasses. He, along with the surviving boys, were strapped to tables and fed a green mutagenic potion. After days of sheer agony, they were then injected with a similar green substance through the bloodstream that turned their veins black before sending them back into the chamber. Many of the boys would succumb to the toxins. Just as Vesemir was about to pass out, we see him open his eyes, now a glowing yellow. In the present day, Vesemir arrives back at Kyre Morhen where he reluctantly oversees the training of recruits. Not wanting to stick around for the entire process, he and another fellow witcher named Luca decided to go to a pub in town. Where they were provoked by two knights. This resulted in swords being drawn, the demise of the two knights and ultimately them being arrested. Following their imprisonment, Tetra implores the king to execute the witchers without question. However, Lady Tserps persuades the king to instead send Vesemir along with Tetra to deal with whatever is terrorizing the forest as reparation for the incident. Lady Tserps personally delivers the king's order to Vesemir and reveals herself as an older Eliana, which in turn reveals that Vesemir has lived half a lifetime and his youth was due to the anti-aging altercations of becoming a witcher. Eliana explains that the heir of the Tserps family took a liking to her and eventually married her which made her lady of the house. While their reunion was brief, Vesemir agreed to the terms and set out with Tetra the next day. Vesemir and Tetra travel deep into the forest in search of the one that's terrorizing it. Tetra tells him the story of a young sorceress that was wrongfully accused of being the cause of an ailing priest. Which in turn led her to be executed by a witcher. However, it was later discovered that the witcher had bribed the priest's cook to poison him as part of a con to earn money. Vesemir, impressed by the sharp con, commented, saying he wished he thought of it which only affirmed Tetra's belief in the Witcher's corrupted nature. The next day, they seemingly walked in a circle, but Tetra realizes that it was a powerful illusion. She undoes the illusion that coated the woods and unveiled a mutated girl, which Vesemir recognizes as Kitsu. Kitsu, now angered by the intrusion, calls forth an unknown species of basilisk. But it was no match for the Witcher and Mage, as they dealt with it with relative ease. Kitsune transforms into the form of a fox and attempts to flee, but not before Vesemir wounded her. Following the trace left behind by Kitsu, the two come across an abandoned elven school where they find the bodies of the other missing elves. They also discover and rescue the captured Philavandral, who explains that Kitsu tried to replicate the experiments that were done on her. Tetra concluded that the witchers are behind all of it as the mages at Kyre Morhen are the only ones with the knowledge of such mutagenic alchemy. Motivated by the fact that monsters were dwindling in numbers, creating new ones would subsequently increase the demand for witchers. Just as Philavandral was about to confront Vesemir, a surviving hybrid elf girl appeared out of the shadows. Fearing that the girl would be a threat after seeing Kitsu's immense powers, Tetra attempts to kill her but is stopped by Vesemir and Philavandral. Philavandral vows that if the girl was to harm a single soul, then he'll call for Vesemir's sword. Vesemir deduces that the monsters he encountered were likely created by Rydrick and leaves to confront his mentor, Daglin. As he departs, Tetra is seen destroying Kitsu's den and frames Vesemir for it. Kitsu, thinking that her child was killed by Vesemir, allies with Tetra against Vesemir. Tetra is then able to convince the king of the Witcher's responsibility in the recent monster attacks and is given the authorization to lay siege to Kyre Morhen. This time, Lady Tserp's plea fails, as she helplessly witnesses Luca's execution. Back in Kyre Morhen, Daglin admits to Vesemir for creating the monsters, to sustain their work and way of life, and they get into a confrontation. Before it could escalate, Rydrick stops them and Eliana appears to warn them of Tetra's assault. Tetra, with the help of Kitsu's monsters, along with her mages and angry villagers, attacks Kyre Morhen. Eliana helps the children at Kyre Morhen flee while the witchers defend their home. Although the witchers held their own, they were overwhelmingly outnumbered by Tetra's forces and were eventually all massacred. Daglin and Vesemir being the only surviving witchers, Daglin holds off against the horde of enemies while Vesemir tries to stop Tetra from killing the Kyre Morhen mages, who held the secrets to making witchers. As Vesemir was about to engage Tetra and her knights, Kitsu grabs hold of Vesemir and puts him into an illusion of Eliana. 
However, Vesemir was able to break out of the illusion and swiftly execute Tetra's knights before engaging in a fierce battle with Tetra. He kills Tetra and stabs Kitsu, only for it to be revealed to be another illusion, in reality, he had killed Rydrick and stabbed Eliana instead. Tetra attacks Vesemir from behind, and she reveals she was the daughter of the sorceress accused by the priest. Explaining her hatred for their kind. Before she could finish Vesemir with her bow, she is killed by a dying Daglin who asks him to take care of the surviving children and make them into better men before succumbing to his wounds. At the behest of Eliana, Vesemir allows Kitsu to flee, and he carries a wounded Eliana from the collapsing castle. Vesemir takes Eliana to a lake that she always dreamed of living by. The two share a brief moment admiring the view before she peacefully passes away, leaving behind a grieving Vesemir. After setting Eliana to rest, Vesemir finds the children and he throws them their witcher medallions, and asks them to choose to either become a witcher, or to walk away. One of them states that everyone will hate them, to which Vesemir smirks and replies, there will always be more monsters Geralt. The boys contemplate Vesemir's words before picking up their medallions. Vesemir came from humble origins, through his persistence in seeking a better life for himself, he became one of the greatest witcher of all time. While others might see him as just another witcher who was willing to do anything for money, throughout the film, we get peaks of his humanity. His honesty is further revealed by his wholesome interactions with Eliana and shows that it was not in fact his character that is to be questioned but rather the life circumstances that led him onto the path he is now. Now that he bears responsibility for the remaining witcher children, perhaps Vesemir would raise them to be more than just mercenaries for hire. Anyways that's it for today, thank you for watching. For more quality content please like and subscribe, and as always have a great day.